think about ADHD or any psychiatric disorders, OCD, eating disorders, mood disorders, bipolar disorders, um, so melancholic depression, ADHD, it's exactly this circuit, frontostriatal limbic. What I would highlight to you here is that there are three key loops for you to consider broadly. Whenever you're looking at any psychiatric patient, you can broadly divide it into the affective loop. So this is, of course, the tripartite network. The affective loop is the limbic loop. And the key message here is always examine for symptoms of hyperarousal and activation. This part, the limbic loop, the mesolimbic system, extreme end is psychosis. Uh, hypomania, mania, mesolimbic system. Lower end, mixed features. Further lower end, anxiety and hyperarousal. Sleep disturbances, so REM sleep activation, mesolimbic pathway again. So this becomes a core component of evaluation. And why am I sort of mentioning this is because often you'll find in ADHD treatment, or generally in psychiatric treatment, we may add one antidepressant, then we say it's not working. We add another antidepressant. And I can tell you, I have never found myself in a situation adding two antidepressants, even in ADHD, where I haven't found that that mesolimbic system needs to be addressed first. The reason is because sleep, when you look at the specific phases, are you able to fall asleep? Are you able to stay asleep? Vivid dreams, nightmares, and what time do you wake up and how do you feel subsequently are all distinct phases of sleep we need to evaluate. And I can tell you with sleep disorders being around 80% in ADHD, you almost always find something there. So what often happens is we're trying to focus on stimulation of the prefrontal cortex, but remember, this amygdala, amygdala activation at significant levels weakens the prefrontal cortex. And this is so, so important in adolescents and young adults. We know that the prefrontal cortex develops until the age of 25. And we know that sleep disturbances, an adolescent or a young adult is often labeled as a limbic dominant individual. So what that means is limbic dominant is the amygdala to the nucleus accumbens, right? So it is a limbic dominant individual that we're looking at. And if there are sleep disturbances, the even two hours of sleep deprivation significantly doubles noradrenaline levels. This weakens the prefrontal cortex. And what they found is, we'll do of course a lot more of this in the neuropsychiatry of sleep, but what they found is that Excessive amygdala stimulation weakens the prefrontal cortex and makes it very rigid. Lack of flexibility. Another paper called it cognitive constipation. So really important, a big tip, always examine the arousal part of the brain. This part of the brain often gives, is responsible for that treatment resistant aspect that we talk about um, in all disorders. The next part, so this is the connection between the orbitofrontal and the nucleus accumbens, as I said. Then we have the cognitive loop. Now the cognitive loop is predominantly that prefrontal cortex, right? And we know this is the seat of the executive function, planning, sequencing, error detection, error monitoring, starting a task, finishing a task, right? All of this is executive function. And we can examine it, of course, we examine it through, say, maybe a Luria three-step test. You could do a go-no-go -no -go test, but these are good ways of, of evaluating it. You can, of course, go through a neuropsych assessment in detail in ADHD if you wish to. But often the questionnaires give us quite a lot. And then we have the motor loop. So the motor loop is important because the striatum is really where we have hyperactivity is one dimension. But you see hyperactivity can present in many other forms through the striatum as tics or Tourette's or compulsions or obsessions. So they could be thought um, excessive activity. And you can see here patients with ADHD exhibit a decreased activity of the prefrontal cortex, hypometabolism in the frontostriatal circuits. And when you look at OCD, it's the opposite. You often find hyperactivation in the frontostriatal circuits. 
Uh, very similar to what happens in tardive dyskinesia, except tardive dyskinesia, the mechanism's different.